Welcome to the next part of the module on Android services and local interprocess communication mechanisms, which continues our analysis of how to program a bound service. The previous video summarized the overall design and the individual steps involved in programming bound services in general and the unique ID generator service in particular. We now take a closer look at the protocol used to communicate between activities and services using the unique ID generator application as a running example. We'll first examine the protocol for launching, connecting, and interacting with a bound service. When Android's activity framework invokes the onStart hook method on the unique ID generator activity, it calls bind service, passing in the intent associated with the bound service and the service connection object. This method starts the unique ID generator service if it's not already running. Android Service Framework then invokes the onBind factory method, which returns the iBinder associated with the messenger that encapsulates the request handler. The Service Framework then dispatches the onServiceConnectedHook method on the service connection object in the activity, which encapsulates the iBinder returned from onBind in a messenger and assigns it to a data member in the activity. When a user presses the Get Unique ID button, the corresponding get unique ID method is dispatched, which creates a request message containing a reply messenger and calls the request messenger's send method to pass the message to the unique ID generator service. The message passed to send is forwarded by the Android binder and hammer frameworks to the handle message hook method of the request handler, which creates a runnable that encapsulates the request message and enqueues the runnable into a thread pool executor. One of the threads in the pool dequeues the runnable, generates a system-wide unique ID, and returns the ID back to the reply handler running in the activity. Android's binder and hammer frameworks once again collaborate to dispatch the handle message hook method on the reply handler, which displays the unique ID to the screen. Next, we'll examine the protocol for unbinding and shutting down a bound service. When an activity is completely obscured by another activity, the Android Activity Framework dispatches the activity's onStop hook method. When the unique ID generator activity's onStop method is dispatched, it calls the unbind service method. If this activity was the last client connected to the service, the Android Service Framework dispatches the service's onUnbind hook method which returns false by default, as shown here. After a service's onUnbind returns false, the Android Service Framework dispatches its onDestroyHook method, which cleans up any allocated resources. For example, the onDestroyHook method in the unique ID generator service shuts down the executor thread pool. Although we've examined the interactions between components in the context of the unique ID generator application, this protocol for launching, connecting, communicating, and shutting down a bound service is representative for essentially all bound services. Now that we've examined the protocol for interacting between activity and service components in the unique ID generator application, we'll begin to delve deeper into the detailed design and implementation of its classes. The unique ID generator service contains a request messenger that encapsulates a request handler and passes this messenger back to the unique ID generator activity when it calls bind service. The activity stores the request messenger and creates a reply messenger that encapsulates a reply handler and sends it to the service via the request handler's handle message hook method, which then generates and sends a system-wide unique ID back to the handle message hook method of the activity's reply handler. Note the symmetry in the design of the unique ID generator application, which defines request and reply messengers that encapsulate request and reply handlers in the service and activity, respectively. We'll start by analyzing the unique ID generator activity, which extends activity and interacts with the user to call a bound service that generates a system-wide unique ID. This activity defines several data members, including a text view that defines a location where the unique ID is displayed to the user, 
and a reference to the messenger implemented in the Unique ID Generator service. A service connection data member is also defined and used to receive a messenger reference after the activity calls bind service with an intent that designates the Unique ID Generator service. After the service is connected, Android's service framework dispatches the on-service connected hook method, which creates a new messenger that encapsulates the iBinder returned by the service's onBind factory method. If the service crashes, Android's service framework dispatches the on-service disconnected hook method to inform the activity not to send any more requests until the service is running again. When the activity becomes visible, Android's activity framework calls the onStart hook method, which calls bind service, passing the appropriate intent returned by the makeIntentFactory method and the service connection object used to dispatch callbacks to the activity when a connection is established with the service. When the user presses the Generate Unique ID button, Android's Activity Framework dispatches the Generate Unique ID method. This method creates a request message and a new messenger that encapsulates the reply handler, which is then stored in the request message's reply to field. The request message is then passed to the Unique ID Generator service as a parameter to the Send method via the reference to the request messenger returned from the service's onBind factory method. The reply to this request message is processed by the activity's reply handler, which extends handler and receives the reply containing the unique ID sent by the unique ID generator service. When the service sends this reply, the binder framework and the hammer framework collaborate to dispatch the handle message hook method, which invokes the unique ID helper method defined in the unique ID generator service to extract the unique ID encapsulated in the reply message. This helper method shields the activity from the details of how the reply message is implemented. The unique ID is then displayed on the screen. When the unique ID generator activity is completely obscured by another activity, the Android Activity Framework dispatches the activity's onStop hook method, which calls unbind service to disconnect from the unique ID generator service. If or when the activity becomes visible again, its onStart hook method will automatically be dispatched by the Android Activity Framework, and the connection to the service will be re-established via bind service. The Unique ID Generator service extends service and generates unique IDs within a pool of threads, which enable multiple client requests to run concurrently and can improve performance on a multi-core device. Unique ID Generator Service defines several data members used throughout its implementation, including the Executor Service implementation that provides a thread pool used to service client requests, the maximum number of threads in that pool, a shared preferences object that stores Unique IDs persistently, and the messenger that receives request messages sent from the Unique ID Generator activity. The onBind factory method returns the iBinder associated with this request messenger when the activity binds to the Unique ID Generator service. When this service is launched, the Android Service Framework dispatches its onCreate hook method, which initializes the data members outlined above. For example, it first creates a request messenger that encapsulates a request handler used to process request messages received from clients. It then obtains a reference to the default file used by the Shared Preferences Framework for this service, as shown here. Finally, it initializes a fixed thread pool executor that's configured to use max threads, as shown here. The Unique ID Generator service also defines several helper methods that shield the Unique ID Generator activity from the details of how the service is implemented. For example, makeIntent is a factory method that creates an intent associated with the Unique ID Generator service. Likewise, the Unique ID method extracts the Unique ID string from the bundle of data contained in the reply message and returns it to the caller. Request messages sent from a Unique ID Generator activity to the Unique ID Generator service are processed by the request handler, which extends handler and overrides the handle message hook method that's dispatched by the hammer framework when a request message arrives from the activity. This hook method stores a reference to the reply messenger in a local variable and then creates and enqueues an anonymous runnable 
that's executed in a thread in the thread pool, where it generates a unique ID and sends the ID back to the activity via the reply messenger reference. The generate unique ID method returns a message containing a unique system-wide ID. This ID is computed by calling the random UUID method, which returns an immutable representation of an 128-bit universally unique ID, as shown here. Although the value returned by random UUID has a very low probability of duplicates, as discussed here, our implementation takes no chances. So it runs in a loop and compares the results returned by random UUID with the values stored in the shared preferences object, which is implemented internally via a Java hash map, as shown at this path name. When a unique value is found, it's added to the persistent collection of unique IDs and then returned as a string in the bundled data of a reply message sent back to the activity. In summary, applications can use services to implement long duration operations in the background. A service is particularly useful for packaging a cohesive set of functionality into a form that's independent of the component that initiates it, which enables the service to be shared by multiple applications. We've examined several services that package functionality for downloading images and generating system-wide unique IDs. Started services are easy to program for simple one-way interactions from an activity to a service. However, they require more complex and ad hoc programming for extended two-way conversations with their clients. In contrast, bound services may be a better choice for more complex two-way interactions between activities and services. For example, they support two-way conversations using either generic or typed interfaces. Likewise, common initialization and communication mechanisms are handled by the Android Service Framework and its connection callback protocol. Moreover, their lifecycle is managed automatically by the Android Service Framework, since they're shut down when no clients are bound to them. However, programmers must understand the details of the multi-step client service connection and interaction protocol, which involves event-driven callbacks. Knowledge of the broker pattern helps to clarify key roles and relationships in bound services, as described in upcoming videos.